Reinhardt, Miss Fluke here, and I've got my friend Guido de Arezzo because we're going to be talking about notation. Now, notation is a visual representation of music using written symbols or the way music looks when we write it down. Now, when we write words in English or Spanish or Arabic or Russian or Tagalog or French or Hindi or any other language you might use, the symbols tell us what the vowels and the consonants sound like. And the same is true for music. Music is literally like reading a foreign language. And notation is simply helping us figure out what the music is trying to say. So how did music notation begin? Well, it didn't start out like the dots and squiggles we're used to seeing in notation today. To figure this out, we have to go way back to the ninth century when music just began to be written down with symbols called neumes. Now, during this time, music was taught mostly by rote, meaning that it was performed over and over again to teach it to someone. Kind of like when you hear a pop song on the radio. You may never see the sheet music for it, but after you've heard it dozens of times, you can sing it fairly accurately. So notation and neumes at this time really just had to help musicians remember the details of the music that they had already learned. Over time, Music neumes and notation with lines became a little more sophisticated as music developed. In the 11th century, a Benedictine monk by the name of Guido from a small town, Arezzo, Italy, revolutionized music notation when he introduced a four-line staff with a clef to help identify pitches more accurately. And he wrote a song that was the basis for teaching a musical scale. He took an existing text of a hymn and he put it to a melody where the beginning note of each phrase was one note higher than the phrase before it. Take a listen. Now let's see how the music and the text work together. In the music, the first note of every phrase goes up the scale, and the text gives us the easy to remember syllables for those notes. Ut, re, mi, fa, so, la. This may seem familiar to some of you. There are only two big changes that happen in the system between the 11th century and today. The syllable ut was later changed to do to make it a more open syllable and easier to sing. And as music theory expanded to include the leading tone as part of the commonly used tones, the syllable T was added for the leading tone. Now we have the solfege syllables we use today. Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So, La, T. Now as music developed over time, in addition to adding T and changing Ut to Do in the scale, other developments took place in music, like clefs, adding other clefs, adding beams or flags, key signatures, bar lines, changing the square note heads to oval note heads that we're familiar with today. All of this advancement and development notation has just helped us read and sight read music more accurately. Now, when we learn music notation together in our earliest years here at Reinhardt, we begin kind of the same idea they had back in the ninth century where we use simple symbols to indicate rhythm and pitch. And then as we become more advanced musicians over the years, we might switch to stick notation or notation with just one or two or three line staves. And then eventually we are reading music off of a full staff like this. If you're interested in learning more about Guido de Arezzo, I do have a book, Do Re Mi, if you can read music, think Guido de Arezzo. And it's the story of how he came up with music notation. It's got some details, how he had to overcome challenges because not everybody was on board with changing up the way they taught music. They liked the way they had always done it. And there's some really cool illustrations in it. I like the way it's illustrated. Um, and then, of course, the story about how he came up with the Guidonian scale. So if you're interested, you can check it out. That's it for today. Keep making music and don't forget to have Do, Re, Mi, Fa, So Much Fun. Thanks, Guido.